Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Uria podcast. I am your host, Elle Edwards, founder of Uria and the Blue House. All this season, we're f- focusing on helping you speak life. Sorry, my mind went to another direction for a moment then. Um, <laughs> this happens sometimes. Today, we're thinking about those times when there are promises that you have from God, things that you have been talking to him about and you've he- you know, you've heard encouragement from him, but maybe it feels like it's a long time coming. Or maybe there's something, simply something you've been praying into for a long time without any certainty of what the outcome will be. What do you do with that? And our... Our little story for today really is from uh, Luke chapter 1 and this is the story of um, Zachariah and Elizabeth. It's probably a story that you are familiar with, it is part of the Christmas story. Um, It's not one of the most popular or most often quoted parts of the Christmas story but it's absolutely a part of the Christmas story. Uh, And so I'm going to read from verse 5 because the opening of chapter 1 just talks about Luke introducing his book and saying why he was writing it. Anyway, in the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Now, some context for you. Yes, lots of us, you know, we have this urge to to start a family. Back in the day, however, if you could not conceive, it was seen as, you know, you must have done something wrong or it was a, a... much more of a social shame, shall we say, which is why it's really important that as Luke tells his story, he's emphasizing the fact that they were righteous in the sight of God. Elizabeth wasn't not able to conceive because they were, you know, mucking life up. Anyway, carrying on with the story. Once when Zachariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all of the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zachariah saw him, he was startled (laughs) and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth. We're going to pause there. There's more. It's great. It talks about how brilliant John's going to be. Zechariah, skipping down to verse 18, asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. And at this point, we find out the angel's name. And it's one of the famous angels. If I was to say to you, name me an angel in the Bible, you would probably name this one. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel and I stand in the presence of God. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now because, and now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. So it's really interesting to me and uh, I had the opportunity to share this story in my local church on Sunday. I felt nudged by Holy Spirit to share it and some of what we're exploring in today's episode is something I had shared on Sunday as well. I don't know that many people from my local church listen to the podcast but in case there's anybody listening who who does, you don't need to listen to this one, you heard it live on Sunday. (laughs) Although having said that, go with the flow Holy Spirit, who knows what's going to come out of my mouth today (laughs) because it's a whole new day. So hmm. it's interesting to me though that this, Gabriel says to Zachariah, your prayer has been heard, your prayer has been answered. So this was obviously something that Elizabeth and Zachariah had been praying about for quite some time. However, she was getting on in age, they'd probably given up I don't know and we don't know from the story whether they'd stopped talking to God about this Uh, and you know she was well past childbearing age and so it was just forgotten about but the encouragement I have for you today and the reminder maybe there is something that you've been praying to God about a lot and it hasn't and it hasn't happened it hasn't unfolded in the way you thought it would and you've kind of parked it really maybe it feels like that season is over maybe that, that that's that's long gone you know you moved on to something else None of our prayers are wasted. And actually, at just the right time, what do they say in this verse? The appointed time, it will come true. Now, I know sometimes when I, I used, when I read that phrase, appointed time, at the appointed time, it will come, it will come true. That did cause some eye rolls on Sunday, I'll be honest, because uh, sometimes, particularly if you've been praying about something for a long time, waiting for God's appointed time can feel like you're waiting forever. 
I understand that. There are some promises, some of you in the Blue House know there are promises on my desk from three years ago, which we're only now seeing the fruit of. I mean, three years is nothing in the big scheme of things, but you know, three years feels like a very long time when you're waiting for something. But maybe there are promises you've been waiting on. Uh, and, and there's a difference, I feel nudged to mention, there's a difference here between praying about something and exploring something with God versus promises. Uh, and both of these things are important. Uh, and I would maintain, uh, I'm going to go to the verse in a moment, there's a Bible verse for this, but I would maintain that actually if God is nudging you to pray into a situation, then whilst it not might not be an explicit promise, you know, he doesn't, he, none of his words are wasted, none of his pr- no, prayers are not wasted. So why would he nudge you and invite you to pray into a situation if it was not also on his heart? I'm just going to say that. At the same time, remember, some of you will know one of the best, one of my most fun questions to ask God, aside from what are the questions you'd like me to ask you, that's always a fun one. But another really wonderful question to explore with God is what promises are done from your perspective? Uh, ask him that and and you have some hope and some certainty that you can hold on to. I have a number of promises that are done from God's perspective and now it's a case of simply walking them out and I hold on to those very dearly and very preciously. So if you're somebody who's following along and like, I actually don't really know what God's promising me, ask him that. I mean, we have promises throughout scripture that we can hang on to. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you is one that comes to mind immediately. Um, which equally you can add your initials to and you can claim as, as your own. Uh, but there is, there's something special about asking God, what promises are done from my perspective? However, the other verse I'm alluding to is in Romans chapter 8, where uh, Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. That, just sit there for a moment, because that the implications of that blow my mind. He who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. Now, who searches your heart? God searches your heart. And because the Spirit intercedes for God's people, Uh, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So Holy Spirit not only is your comforter, your counsellor, your guide, your teacher, your helper, your advocate, and all those other things that we're told about, he is also talking to presumably God the Father about the things that are the will of of God collectively. And I know we've just touched upon a whole load of theology around the Trinity, which is probably too big to have a conversation around within one podcast episode. But it's this idea, okay, so God the Father is God. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Spirit is God. But the Spirit is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. And the Father is not the Spirit. But they're all God. That's mental. (laughs) And I recognize that's, you know, really a lot. Uh, However, I was reading something yesterday in the opening verses. This is an aside, really, but... um, I don't know who needs this. I was reading something yesterday in the opening verses of Genesis where it talked about, um, am I going to turn to it? It's, my Bible's over there. Uh, it talked about in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, oh, let me just find it. Hold on. Oops. Hang on. Because there was there was an interesting, you know, we know from John, the opening chapter of John, that Jesus is the word. And then there was a suggestion or that was that when God spoke the world into existence, he did so through Jesus, the word. So it says here, in the beginning, God made heaven and earth. The earth was invisible and unfinished and darkness was over the deep. The spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And there was a note in the bot here. Where did I read it then? It wasn't there. Oh, he's talking about the central role of Jesus, the word of the Father in creation. Because we're told in um, somewhere in the New Testament, all things being made through him. That's in John 1. Um, there was a note there, which I can't find right now, and I'm not going to try and find it because we're trying to record this podcast episode. But there was a there was a, a pondering that, that, that was there that led me down this other whole rabbit trail. We need a more positive word for rabbit trail than rabbit trail, because rabbit trail implies something negative. And actually, any pondering that you go on and meandering pathways that you take with Holy Spirit can be great fun. But God said, let there be light. And so God spoke, and then Jesus, the word, through whom all things are made, and without him, nothing can be made, it 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 became and so it was this showing this picture you know we're told we've just read it already that the spirit was hovering and then the father speaks and then the word 
creates it's just this this dynamic of all three together uh, i don't know where i went off in my mind with that tangent there side note about the trinity really i guess um but it's just going back to that verse that talks about uh, he, uh the spirit intercedes for god's people in accordance with the will of god because of course the holy spirit can talk to the trinity about the things that are the will of the trinity because he knows them all already uh, <laughs> so what's my encouragement in all of this for you because we need to get this around in some kind of sort of coherent thought this is probably the most rambly episode we've had in this series to date it's that reminder that if there are promises that you are waiting on none of that is wasted that none of we're told i think it's in isaiah but no word spoken from god will return to him void if there are things that god has shared with you that are on his heart that he's having you pray into that is not wasted and at the same time, you sometimes have to wait for those things. You you need to wait for the appointed time. Using the analogy of childbirth, we absolutely do not want babies being born too soon. Otherwise, they are not ready. They are not complete and it becomes dangerous. And, and if it's far too early, they, they, they cannot, they cannot um, survive. Uh, and so the reminder then is, yes, you are sometimes going to need to wait. And that can be a tricky uh, experience for you the the way to counteract that is to to pray with holy spirit and that will sometimes mean praying in your prayer language uh, and if you don't use that kind of terminology then that's another conversation for another time but aches and groans when you can't articulate it know that holy spirit is there with you interceding to father son and holy spirit on your behalf and so if you're not sure what you should be praying ask god you can talk to him about it in in your in your prayer language you can talk to him about it with aches and groans you can also talk to him about it in your native language which in my case is english you might be um your first language might be a different language but ask god how are you inviting me to pray into this situation what is on your heart what does this look like because then if there's something that you've been praying into consistently but it's feeling a little bit like ugh, falling flat or maybe you've given up in engaging god in that process how should i be praying for this situation how how would you invite me to pray for this person what does that look like you know then that you are praying in accordance with god's vision of the bigger picture within the will of god and it actually becomes a much more empowering place to have those conversations with god from so whilst this episode does not give you any magic answers for those times when you're waiting and waiting and waiting on promises I don't, I don't believe there's any magic formula that makes these things happen any quicker. They simply need to happen at the right time. Going back to our analogy of child, children, you know, developing in mother's wombs, etc. You do not want to give birth prematurely. It needs to be at the appointed time. And at the same time, to help you keep on keeping on and to not lose heart and to not give up, the your plaything with this is to go you know, explore it with god what are those things that you are feeling like you've been invited to pray into that maybe you're feeling a bit discouraged about ask him what's on his heart how would you how would he invite you to pray into those situations i am going to of course pray for you as well like we do every episode with that reminder though we talked about encouragement and keeping on keeping on the blue house is perfect for that so if you don't already have a community and actually one of the pieces we literally just yesterday you will have heard me share with you before about the uh, the life compass practice so our spiritual director introduced us to it yesterday and now our, our play thing between now and next tuesday when we gather again is to explore it and i'm doing this alongside everybody else as well and one of the pieces that has come through really clearly for me is this reminder that the blue house is here as a hub a hub a creative hub to equip and release kingdom adventures uh, and we're using that language to keep it as wide and as possible because it it covers many things so if you're somebody who is feeling stirred by god as you prepare for 2023 there are adventures that you are being invited into with god the blue house is here to help support you in that and part of that you've heard me mention the leadership training part of that is you know building you up to be a a, a, a whole and healthy leader in that endeavor but there's so much more to that again and i almost suspect i'm going to need to record a new intro int a new intro video having only recorded a new intro video like three days ago or two days ago there's another one <laughs> because actually this picture is is 
is developing and becoming bigger than I realised, which is exciting to me and you get to be a part of that. So if you're not already a member of the Blue House, go to uia.com forward slash join. You can watch the current intro video because I haven't done a new one yet. Um, it's new from two days ago, but it had new, not in new with the new stuff from yesterday and today. <laughs> but you can, you can watch the video, uh, but more importantly, there's links there where you can come and join us. There are monthly and annual memberships available. And as a result of doing so, you get to access the, the Life Compass practice. Uh, there is recordings uh, and all of that good stuff, plus all the other wonderful resources that we have already there and everything that's coming up. Anyway, let me pray for you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I just thank you right now for who you are. Three in one, God eternal. And I thank you for the way that you lead us and you guide us. Those promises that we have in scripture that you tell us that you, Holy Spirit, are there interceding and talking to the Trinity about those things that are on our hearts. And that is incredible and amazing and mind-blowing to me and we just thank you for what you do and so right now if there are any people who are who are listening or watching who are feeling discouragement we just ask right now in Jesus name that you would break off discouragement break off any lies that they've been believing about this situation let us not be like Zachariah where we possibly think it's too late we know that your timing is perfect and we do not want to give birth prematurely we want to be birthing these next adventures at just the right time and so help us holy spirit to lean into you help us to to hear you help us to recognize the work that you do in our lives because you are a gift from jesus and i just thank you for who you are father son and holy spirit it is this christmas this advent season where we are thinking very clearly about emmanuel god with us and you came as a baby, Jesus, and you, but you didn't stay as a baby. So we thank you for the journey that you traveled, the fact that you went to the cross so that we could know just how loved by you we are, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But thank you that you didn't stop there, that you gave us a gift so that God really is with us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We just thank you for who you are. And I just lift up every single person who is following along with these podcast episodes. Meet them where they are at right now. Holy Spirit, whisper to their hearts. Help them to hear what they need from this episode and anything that they hear from, you know, from previous episodes. We want to hear your wisdom and your love in all of these situations. Thank you for who you are. Lead us on into the rest of today. Uh, and in Jesus' name, I, I ask this. Amen. As always, thank you for following along. If you know anybody who would benefit from this encouragement, I hope it's been encouraging. <laughs> I feel encouraged. Uh, this is one of the joys of um, having just a few notes and then opening my mouth and then seeing where Holy Spirit leads us. I feel mightily encouraged. Uh, and there are absolutely, know that all of the different playthings I give you, I, I do them myself as well. That's incidentally how the Holy Spirit love notes started for those of you who enjoy those or if you get them via the Sam Says podcast. They are conversations between me and God. So know that whilst I am here to, as, as the leader and the founder and all of that good stuff, I am walking this journey with you. And so some of these questions you know, and some of those promises, asking God, how do you want me to pray into those situations? That feels very significant and I'll be doing that myself as well. So anyway, all of that said, if you know somebody who would benefit from that reminder, please do share this with them. Uh, and if you're interested in the Blue House, don't forget you can find out more about that. There's links in the show notes. I'll be back tomorrow at the same time. We have just a few episodes left of this season and this is going to be the final season of the UEA podcast. We've got a brand new podcast launching in January. I did not know that until this morning either. <laughs> so you've heard it here first. I haven't even had a chance to tell the people inside the Blue House yet. So Blue House folks are going to obviously listen to this so they will know. Um, but I'm just giving you a heads up. There is new things afoot, new fun, wonderful things. And Blue House members, uh, there's an extra special unadvertised bonus as a result for you. I shall tell you about that inside the Blue House. Anyway, I shall be back tomorrow. Thank you for watching and listening. I shall catch up with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.